What if I told you you were an heir? That's a, that's a good thing, right? Well, I guess it depends on what you're heir to. Hi, this is Daryl Chesser, and welcome back to Sea Life. We've been doing a series of uh, teachings from the writings I've posted. So I do a lot of writing, and uh, on this series, this episode, I will read one of those writings. Today's is entitled Heirs. Yes, that's H-E-I-R-S, like I am heir to this, or I'm heir to a fortune, or heir to the throne. But it's called Heirs. So let's get started. Paul pins the words below in his second letter to the Corinthians. And it reads like this, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might be rich. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 9. And I'm reading in the uh, uh, something... English version. <laughs> MEV. In the next chapter, Paul continues, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Wow. Paul writes this to the Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we were able to ask or even imagine according to the power that is working in us. To him be the glory and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And that's Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. Paul wrote this in Philippians. But God, my God, shall supply your need, your every need, according to his riches. Not mine, not my riches, not my bank account, but according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's Philippians 4, 19 and 20. Even Jesus, after he was resurrected, he said this to his disciples. When the morning came, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. And he said to them, then throw the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Well, so they did. And now they were not able to, to draw it in because of the abundance of fish. Jesus had done something similar three years earlier when he called the disciples to follow him. And when they saw the nets this time overflowing with what the scripture says, 153 large fish. It just doesn't say fish, it says large fish. They recognized this is Jesus. This is Jesus who had brought the abundance. See, that's, uh, that abundance and that supply is a bit of a trademark for Jesus. They recognized, oh my goodness, we caught nothing. We throw it to where this guy says, and the nets are full. We can't even hardly drag it in. It is full. Now, you can go any direction you want with that evangelism, sure. But it is also to their jobs. It is also to where he knows where the stuff is. Whether you call it evangelism or increase. He knows where it's at. I know where the fish are. That was their job. And if you're talking just straight evangelism, he knows where the fish are. Throw the net over here. It's time to throw the net there. So whichever way you want to take that, you can get real spiritual on me, but just read it for what it says. What I'm trying to say is God wants to be our supply, our exceedingly abundant supply. Remember the rich guy 
uh, who became poor for our sakes so that we might become rich through him? Well, that guy, Jesus Christ, is now the exclusive broker for our heavenly father here on earth. He's the guy that will get the supply from his father's account and get it to us. Now, Paul said in Philippians, remember, we read this before, and I'm just going to kind of quote it. My God will supply all your need according to his riches. It's God's supply, and it's from his riches or his bank account. And now here's where Jesus Christ comes in. And it's by Christ Jesus that it comes. It's through Christ. It's by Christ. I did a teaching a little bit a few weeks ago that said, from God, through or by Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost in us, building and encouraging and teaching. From, through, or by, and in. Now, let me go old school for a minute. This should be interesting. You will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Your offspring will be blessed in the produce of your ground and the offspring of your livestock, the increase of your herd and the flocks of your sheep. Your basket and your kneading bowl will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Now, there's a lot of people we know, of course, that we're really, we're blessed when they, when they go out. <laughs> Sorry. But you know that. I may be that guy that when I finally leave, you're going, oh, thank God. I'm blessed. <laughs> but I want to be the guy that's blessed coming in and the guy that's blessed going out. I want to be that guy. <clears throat> Back to it. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you set your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. All the people of earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will make you overflow in prosperity in the offspring of your body, in the offspring of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open up to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its seasons and to bless all the work of your hand. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will only be above and you will not be beneath. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it's uh, chapter uh, verses 3 through 8 and 10 through 13. This is the blessings of the law. If you keep the law. And then it's followed by about 60 verses or 55 verses or something like that of the curses of the law. Oh, it's so depressing to read those things. But I wanted to say this. This is just some of the blessings associated with the law. Just some of the blessings associated. He will command the blessing on us. A sorcerer was hired in one of the stories of the Bible to curse Israel by a king who was afraid of the great horde moving toward him called Israel. The sorcerer wasn't able to curse Israel because God would not allow him to. The sorcerer then spoke out and declared, How can I curse what God has blessed? The blessing of God, the entire blessing, is experienced and encapsulated in one name, Jesus Christ, by faith. You are blessed because the blessing is now in you and you in him because you're in Christ. By faith in his finished work at the cross now, you can't be cursed anymore. It, you cannot curse what God has blessed. The blessings of the law are awesome. But there, there is something even more for those who are in Christ by faith. Just a couple of more verses here. Step one uh, of these, where I'm going, is to first identify who's the heir. 
and to whom am I an heir? And then we'll go to what? Step two. So step one is to understand what we gained by faith in Christ Jesus. In other words, are we heirs? Who is an heir? And to whom? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And that we, Paul being a Jew and a, Mess a Messianic Jew, in other words, he's a Christian now, but he's of Jewish. He had Abraham's blessings. So he's saying, Gentiles, man, you're going to, you get, uh, you get uh, Abraham's blessings as a side, as a side bonus to salvation and, and, and forgiveness of sins and eternal life and the, and the promised Holy Spirit. But here's what the Jews got out of it that, that turned to faith in Christ Jesus. He goes, that we, him and his brothers, the Jewish believers, might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the Gentiles, we get the blessings of Abraham and the promise of the Holy Spirit in one package by faith in Jesus Christ and then receiving the Holy Ghost power into us. Now the Jews, they're made righteous. This is their gospel. This is their savior. This is their promise. And they are made righteous. They still retain the blessings of Abraham. And, but now they add the promise of the spirit that had been promised through the Old Testament and through the prophets, God's Holy Spirit. So, number one, I wanted to identify that by faith in Christ, I have the blessing of Abraham. That's what the greater does to the lesser, right? The blessing of Abraham. It was God's blessing on Abraham initially that through him, all the families of the earth, through his seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed. But it also ran over into, man, the guy was a great abundance. He was of great uh, favor. I mean, even when he did wrong, when he was growing and learning in this relationship with God, uh, even when he did wrong, God would protect him. I mean, and God had kings pay him after Abraham lied to them about his wife. And the kings ended up paying him to go away and say, listen, I didn't touch her. God showed, showed up and said, I better not touch her. And I didn't. So we who have been saved by faith in Christ Jesus have also been grandfathered into the blessing given to Abraham. And that blessing is Christ Jesus and his finished work on that cross and his resurrection. Paul then confirms this with this passage at the end of the chapter there in Galatians. It says, if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, the promise given to Abraham, the blessing given to Abraham, the blessing of the whole earth, which is Jesus Christ crucified. Whew. That was what the message was on that day in Israel when in Bethlehem, when Jesus was born and the angelic hosts are going, peace on earth, goodwill to men, good times are rolling. In other words, it's here. The promise has come. The blessing has come. We are heirs of Abraham's blessing and the promise when we were in Christ Jesus. So what is greater than all of the blessings listed in Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of the law? Those are spectacular. Well, mostly it was not through the law that Abraham and his descendants received the promise. This is what Paul wrote in Romans. It was not through the law that Abraham and his descendants received the promise that he would be heir of the world. But through the righteousness of faith. I want, I want you to see that again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is talking about Israel. Praise God, that is like the center of the earth and uh, center of attention right now, but it's going to be the center of the earth. It is like, there's where Christ is going to rule and reign in the millennial, right? This is where it is going down. And this is what the, the law was talking about. In their land, it will make it abundant. And you can appropriate this for yourself and your lands too, by faith. But it will make your land abundant and your sheep and, and, and protect you. And you'll be the head and not the tail. And I'm going, 
the, the promise here is so much bigger. Praise God for that. We're going to see that promise to Abraham. But look at this one. It says, it was not through the law or the blessings of the law that Abraham and his descendants received the promise that he would be heir of the world. Listen to me. And this was through the righteousness of faith, not of the law. This is amazing to me. When you think about this, if you're going to be heir of the world because you're in Christ Jesus, and we struggle to, the, with the simplest concepts of God's righteousness and God's love for us, I, I know I do. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking down to you. I'm saying, man, condemnation tries to hammer you. I mean, you, you feel guilty for not feeling guilty. I mean, just the least bad look or something somebody gives you, and you're going, ah, oh, what have I done? And you start hammering yourself. Or the enemy starts to steal from you and starts to come in on you. And you, you hear some teaching that, well, apparently you've done something wrong. And apparently... You know, this is the reaping and sowing. And apparently, blah, 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 blah. But I got news for you. There is nothing greater than the blood of Christ Jesus. Nothing greater than the cross. The destroyer must pass over. If you believe it's God's will for you to be attacked, then you're going to submit to that and begin to stand down instead of standing up and saying, hey, my God shall supply all my need. I'm heir to the world. By faith in Christ Jesus, I'm in Christ. I'm heir to the world. Not just Israel, the world. The whole thing is mine in Christ. We're going to have a pretty big family. We're going to fill this place up, the family of God. So the land of Israel was the center of it. But the whole world is what we're heirs to. Now, I attended public school, and I was not a math scholar but I do believe a world is greater than a country. I'm just saying. That makes sense to me. And as the famous philosopher Bubba once said, if something's good, more is better. Let me end with this. The earth belongs to the Lord and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. It's in Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's. This is our planet. It's going to be revamped. It's going to be renewed and uh, upgraded. But this is our world. It's coming. Right now, we're ambassadors here. We've been excluded from our own planet in that sense. They put God on the outside looking in. And God came back in looking for volunteers. Abraham said, you had your Noahs, you had your Enochs, you had... You know, all the way down the line, there was someone that stood up and said, okay. <clears throat> but the earth is the Lord's. I just want to encourage you. I'm not trying to preach you're going to, you should be rich or you should be, but I'm also not not preaching that. I'm saying stop putting limits on God. God can do what he wants. If God wants to make you rich, are you going to gripe and moan about it? Anyway, I want to pray for you real quick because darkness abounds out there. Discouragement abounds. I mean, prices go up and taxes get higher and they add more regulations and more things to do and, and cars, you know, maintenance of cars and air conditioners go down and stuff breaks and clothes and food and that goes up, all the prices. And the squeeze is on, Right. But these promises tell us, look, we're heirs of the world by faith in Christ Jesus and the finished work on the cross. I know God loves me. We need to accept he's going to take care of us. Jesus said, listen to me, kids. My Father in heaven knows you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, this is before the cross. Now, you've already received Jesus Christ, most likely if you're listening to this, and those that are not today, today's a good chance for you to get born again. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Confess that he is Lord. Believe that God raised him from the dead, and you'll be saved. Pray that. I believe 
Jesus Christ was raised from the grave by God. I accept that and I choose to believe that today by faith. And I believe that Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. And I ask you, Father, to receive all of these men and women that are praying that prayer today and bring them into the family of God and begin to teach them and show them by your Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Spirit right now. Receive the, the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. So let me pray real quick for the rest of you. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for your kindness and your grace and your mercy. Your supply has no end. Everything in the world is yours already. Everything under the world, everything over the world, even the things that do not we do not even see. God can get it. They're his. So when he says, out of my supply, I will supply all your need according to my own riches, not according to yours, by Christ Jesus. So I pray for all of the families and, uh, and individuals out there in their uh, jobs, in their lives, in their personal finances, in their bodies, in their minds, in their health. My God shall supply all your need today according to his riches and glory by our Savior Christ Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I, I pray peace and I speak peace over them and I speak blessing over them. I say they are the blessed. You are the blessed. Believe it. Father, thank you. We believe that we receive this prayer answered and that peace comes to these people and myself and their households. Health comes there because of Christ Jesus. Wealth comes there because of Christ Jesus. Favor and the blessings of God. Remember, if something's good, then more is better. Yeah, give us the whole world. 